Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Andrew Clark and today we are going to be talking about guitar tone. More specifically, I'm going to be sharing a five point checklist that will get you guaranteed great guitar tone. Now you're going to need all five of these. If you miss even one, your guitar tone will continue to be, well, average. And honestly, this applies to every single genre out there. So it doesn't matter what your rig looks like. It doesn't matter how much money you've spent on it. If you can nail down all of these things, then you're going to be getting compliments on your guitar tone no matter where you play. So let's get into it. Point number one, your guitar needs to be in good shape. And firstly, that means that you're in tune and that your guitar is properly intonated. It's also pretty important to have fresh strings. If your guitar strings are dead, your guitar is going to be lacking some sustain and it won't have that top end sparkle that we're after. It's also going to be important to have a good setup. So that means that your neck relief is set right and that your action at your saddles is also set right. Now a lot of people naturally like to set their action as low as possible but if you want to get every drop of tone out of your guitar it's actually better to set your action just a little bit higher than you're comfortable with. This will really bring your guitar to life and actually make it more resonant. And lastly here depending on what type of guitar you have and what type of pickups you have you'll want to adjust your pickup height. Now you can find suggested heights for just about every pickup out there if you do some searching online and I'd say that's a pretty good starting point and you can raise and lower and experiment until you find something you're happy with. Okay Okay, point number two, your pedal board is buffered, boosted, and powered. Since your guitar signal has a long way to travel from the output of your guitar to the front of your pedal board, through all of those pedals, and then out to the amplifier, some good buffers are going to help push that signal along. A good rule of thumb is to have one buffer on the input of your pedal board and then one buffer on the output of your pedal board. Thankfully, a lot of tuners out there from TC Electronic or from Boss have pretty solid buffers. So if that's the first pedal in your chain, then you're already set. And then a lot of digital pedals, so things from Strymon or Source Audio have really high quality buffers. And if one of those is the last pedal in your chain, then you're probably good to go. The first two pedals on my pedal board are actually true bypass, so I have to use a separate buffer that I have mounted underneath my pedal board. Next up, it's important to make sure that you're using good cables. So that means good cables from your guitar to your pedal board and from your pedal board to your amp, and also good cables connecting all your pedals together. You definitely don't need to go with the most expensive option out there. It's really not going to make that much of a difference. And at the same time, I'd probably stay away from the cheaper stuff. So anything middle of the road is going to be your best bet. If you use a guitar with low output pickups or single coils like a Stratocaster, then I'd recommend placing some sort of clean boost near the front of your pedal chain. This will just help push the front end of a lot of your overdrives and distortions a little bit harder. With low output pickups, this really fattens things up and honestly, it always sounds better to me. And the last thing for the pedal board is to use an isolated power supply. There are a ton of great options out there. The most important thing to pay attention to is to make sure that each output is isolated and that those outputs are going to give you enough current to power every pedal on your board. Those fancy digital pedals tend to draw a lot of power, so it's important to double check this. All right, on to point number three, which is compression. Now I'm not just talking about a compressor pedal. I'm actually talking about the broader term, which includes overdrives and distortions as well. Whether you like your guitar to sound really clean or really dirty, you want to find a good balance between an uncompressed signal, which is going to sound very spiky and dynamic and an overly compressed signal, which is going to sound like it has no dynamics whatsoever. If you play with a tube amp, cranking that amplifier up is going to create natural tube compression. But if you set your amp pretty clean, then you're going to need to get compression from something else. So for a totally clean sound, that would be a compressor pedal, but if you like to have a little bit of grit, then an overdrive can do a really good job of just giving you the right amount of compression. And what that means is when you play lightly, the guitar will come through nice and clean, but when you dig in, the guitar won't actually get louder. Instead, it will get that hair, that little bit of overdrive. The term a lot of people like to use is edge of breakup, and it's kind of the sweet spot of guitar tone. If you like your guitar to be pretty distorted, then the best thing to do here is just back away on the gain or distortion knob a little bit, just so that you retain some of your dynamics. Okay, so point number four is EQ. So this one is incredibly subjective. Think about BB King and Stevie Ray Vaughan. They both have amazing guitar tone. They both play the blues, but their guitars sound totally different. So your EQ preferences are going to come down to what type of guitar that you use, what kind of amp you use, and also what pedals you use. A guitar with humbuckers is going to naturally have more mid range and less top end sparkle. And then a Strat is going to have much less mids, but it's going to have way more clarity. It's important to note that if you pulled the guitar tones out of your favorite songs, you'd actually find that they don't have a lot of low end and they don't have a lot of top end and good guitar tone kind of all lives inside the mid frequencies. Something I like to do is I will keep my rhythm tone set kind of flat or maybe with a bit of a mid scoop. And then when I'm ready to play a lead line or a solo, I'll use a boost with an EQ so that I can specifically bump up those mids to cut through the mix. Most important thing with all of this is just to make sure that you don't have too much low end going on. When you play by yourself, guitar sounds way better when you have the bass cranked. But as soon as you're playing in a situation with a bass player, you're going to be stepping all over his or her toes. All right. And finally, point number five, add some moisture. 
The obvious one here is to have some always on spring or plate reverb. This just makes the guitar feel way more natural and like it's living inside of a good sounding space. Now the other thing I wanted to mention here is slapback delay. So for a lot of people this one won't be as essential as reverb, but if you have it set to one fast repeat and the mix set pretty low, it creates a kind of thickening effect for your guitar. And honestly you should just try it because once you get used to it, you'll find once you turn it off you'll immediately need to turn it back on because everything just sounds so much better. Okay I need to add one more bonus point to our little checklist here and that is the capture method. Now I'm somebody who uses real amps all the time so for me that's going to be a microphone and the rule of thumb with most microphones is that you want to set it pretty close to the grill cloth then find the point in the middle of the center of the speaker and the outer edge of the speaker and set the mic there. Then if you want it to be a little bit brighter you can move the mic a little bit closer to the center of the speaker and if you need it to be a little bit darker you can move the microphone closer to the edge. Now I don't use amp modelers very much but I know a lot of guitar players who do and they tell me how important impulse response are. So if you're an amp modeler user, make sure you spend some time digging into speaker IRs and experiment so you can find the one that's right for you. And there you have the five pillars of great sounding guitar. If you get all five of these things right, I promise, I guarantee you will have near perfect guitar tone. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this, please make sure you go down and hit that subscribe button because I release a new guitar video like this every single week. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.